So within my whole entire career of basically uploading videos on YouTube and everything, I pretty much said one iPhone was one of those iPhones that may have had the least amount of impact in general, and I really do think that may have been the iPhone 5C. But looking at it now, I mean, it was just such a cute and adorable phone that every time I look at it, even though I kind of have some feelings about it, I do kind of get a you know couple butterflies in my stomach. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lie, you know what I mean? Like I have to tell you like it is. And I've never felt that way about a phone, probably other than the iPhone 4 or 4S. But with the iPhone 5C, even though it came out the same year as the iPhone 5S, which I think the 5S was also one of those iPhones that have held up extremely well throughout, you know, the test of time. I think the iPhone 5C is definitely one of those devices that has a lot of capability behind it still, but it definitely isn't anybody's. I don't think it's anybody's, you know, best iPhone that ever came out or anything like that for sure. So this phone originally came out in 2013. And what I can tell you is, is that for sure at the end of the day, this is not a brand new phone. This phone is not going to, you know, be anybody's main phone right now. It might actually be, but for a majority of you using it, for a majority of you watching this video, you're probably just trying to see how this phone even holds up and if it's still usable. Now this phone is still completely usable in my opinion. It still has some features. And even for a 2013 phone that was based off a 2012 phone, it still actually has some capability behind it. And it's not like a super outdated device and even for an iPhone 5C what I can tell you is is that the 5C laid out the you know kind of the pavement and the map of what a budget phone could eventually be like from Apple because we didn't even see another 5C type of device from Apple until the iPhone 10R for the most part. Now they did release the iPhone SE, but that wasn't at the same rollout time as the iPhone, you know, of the iPhone of that time, which was the iPhone 7 and iPhone 6S. It was kind of like its own phone. I think to kind of group this the iPhone 5C, in my opinion, the impact is more so the same device coming out the same time, but just a budget model of it and that's pretty much what the iphone 5c was and you still had that same four inch panel on the iphone 5c as well which i found pretty funny because all iphones at the time had you know four inch displays and there really i don't think was a big difference from the display of the 5c to the 5s just like how there wasn't between the 5 and the 5s in my opinion so apple kind of did i mean they did such a good job at marketing the iphone 5s that even though the 5s and 5c had a lot of characteristics that were similar a lot of people ended up picking up the 5s in my opinion even though the 5c was cheaper now you still have that home button no fingerprint sensor on the iPhone 5C, which I think for the most part was okay. You know, if you wanted the fingerprint sensor, you could spend a little bit more money getting it from the other device. But I think the 5C with its standard home button was still perfectly fine for a lot of people. Now you have that lightning port on the bottom, which has still held up the test of time. Apple is still currently using that port, which is still extremely impressive in my opinion. They apparently are going to be removing it next year, but that's still a really good thing. And then you had the infamous plastic back, which that was something that was super interesting to me because we didn't get a plastic back on an iPhone since the iPhone 3GS at the time. Ever since then, every single iPhone had either in a glass back or an aluminum back. And with the iPhone 5C, it had that plastic back. It was cheaper to manufacture and everything. So totally makes sense in my opinion, which I think is a great thing. But still, a lot of people felt a way about it. And I think at the end of the day, the impact that it has now it really didn't have too much because Apple still makes even their budget phones, the, the iPhone 11, the iPhone 12 and 12 mini, with such premium parts, it's not like they put the plastic on the back of their devices, just like how Samsung does now. It doesn't make any sense. Even their for their most premium devices, like the Galaxy Note 20 series, the Galaxy S20 FE, even taking out the S20 FE, the Note 20, that phone still has a plastic back, which is so insane to me. So that in and of itself is another huge problem in my opinion. But regardless, above that plastic back kind of, you do have that single camera setup, which is actually pretty interesting to kind of hit on because it's a single eight megapixel sensor. You can do full HD videos on it, which I think is pretty cool. But beyond that, there's not a whole lot of capability that this device has anymore. I mean, it's pretty basic. You know, you can do 1080p videos like I stated. There's no portrait mode, no night mode, no nothing like that. And I'm pretty sure the quality of these photos, if you take them outdoors, it's probably going to be okay. But I don't think anybody's really going to be taking photos or videos from the specific phone and thinking like, wow, this is still a really good camera. I think the iPhone 5S is more so like that because you do have the ability of doing slow-mo videos and photos on that or slow-mo videos on that. But the iPhone 5C for the most part sits at an interesting spot because I don't really think anybody's thinking that, but you do have a 1.2 megapixel front-facing camera that can do HD videos on that. So I think that's another pretty cool thing. As a whole, like I said before, I don't think anybody's looking at this specific camera lens and being like, wow, this is such a great camera. This is so great. I don't think anybody's thinking that. 
but also I just don't really think anybody's really thinking about this phone anymore like that either so it's probably okay so what I can tell you is the whole entire outside of this device was more or less the same what you were already expecting from the cheaper iPhone 5c and the iPhone 5s the bigger differences was was the chipsets inside and the way it feels you know the iPhone 5s definitely felt like a more premium device and you did have that fingerprint sensor where the iPhone 5c really only had you know a cheaper price tag to it it didn't really have anything that excelled in my opinion but still a lot of people bought this one too now software wise it's pretty much outdated it's not getting any more updates so there's no point in talking about that for 30 minutes but performance wise this thing does have that apple a6 chip inside of it a dual core cpu and one gigabyte of ram now what i can tell you about the whole entire performance segment of this specific iphone is that yes it's not like a really good performing iphone but at that time and think about it like this at that time the iphone 5 was only one generation behind and for this budget tier iphone to have a last generation chip i think is perfect perfectly fine in my opinion, but I think Apple has learned since then and has really implemented the chipset of being the most important thing and the body of being kind of the last contender. And, and this time they were kind of doing both. They were substituting the body for an older, cheaper kind of design, but they were also using last year's, you know, chipsets. With Apple now, even with the iPhone XR, iPhone 11, iPhone 12, and 12 mini, they have post even with the iPhone SE, whichever chipset they had at that time, and the iPhone SE too, whichever chipset they have at that time that's their latest one, they pretty much implement it on all their devices across the board. They don't do that for iPods and with the seventh generation at that time, and they don't really do it for iPads too frequently either, because there's a lot of differences that happen with those. But for iPhones, Apple always pushes out the latest chipsets in them. And with the iPhone 5C, Apple kind of did the worst of both worlds in my opinion. But the performance of this iPhone, if I have to say one good thing about it, and I've been talking good things about this iPhone, this Whole entire video, I will tell you, it's probably still an okay performing phone for the most part. I think if somebody still had to go and use this thing, I think they could definitely have an okay experience with it, but I just don't think anybody's really sitting there and actually using this type of device anymore. I think more so than not, people kind of may just have one laying around or something, and I think that may be a better way to look at it. I think if somebody had to go and use this phone as an everyday device, I think they would probably be okay with it, you know, and if I had to use it as an everyday device, I think I would be okay okay with it too because I just don't think it's that bad of a performing phone. I just think the biggest problems with it per se are probably the software enhancements and the software features and the slowness factor. But I can still probably download all the apps I want to. I can probably still, you know, get updates through the app store for all those apps. So that's another huge asset. A big problem that we see on Androids is that once they're a couple generations old for the software, they're pretty much outdated and sooner than later a lot of those apps kind of get outdated in the app store too and you can't even get updates through the app store. So that's that's another big deal. With the iPhone 5C, you can still get a lot of updates too, which is another huge asset. So when it comes down to the performance, obviously it's not going to be that great of a performing phone, but for a 2013 phone that was based off a 2012 chipset, I don't think it's that bad. Like, and, and the more I think about it, I really don't think this phone was as bad as I thought it was at that time. Definitely at that time, it may have been the worst, but because of Apple's decisions since then and the little weird things they do here and there, I don't know. I kind of get the idea that the iPhone 5C wasn't really that bad after all, in my opinion. So the battery life wise, I mean, I, there's a, I guess I have to hit on it. This thing had a 1500 million power battery, I believe, or 1400. It was a 15, 10 million power battery, so definitely not a super small battery size, and I think it actually may have had a somewhat around the same battery size as the iPhone 5S, so that's a really good thing, maybe even a little bit bigger, but I will tell you, I don't really think anybody's using this battery life anymore, nobody really cares anymore, so I'm not even going to hit on it, it's like an okay battery life for a 2013 phone, but to kind of sum up this video and to hint the question, is the iPhone 5C still worth it in the later part of 2020? Man, what I can tell you is, is that Obviously, I don't think it's worth it per se. I don't think it's worth it for somebody to actually go out of their way and use it. But if somebody is still using this device, even if there's one person out there, I'm sure there is, this phone still has a lot of character, you know, for the history and the historical factor behind this device, it was one of the first times Apple actually made a budget phone that was intended to be a budget phone, and the fact that it still turns on for me, it still has a good camera for the most part, really the only downside is the oldness factor because it's so outdated, it just doesn't get any more software updates, it's stuck on iOS 10, it's not like it's getting iOS 14 features or anything, I just think that's the main issue, I feel like I'm going to be missing out on a lot of those things, but for the rock capability, for the iMac 
iMessage for the FaceTime. It still has those type of capabilities. It's just going to do everything I do on a daily basis just a little bit slower, which I think is totally okay. You know, this is not meant to be a super fast phone. And I think this phone is actually held up pretty well. And I think for the performance for being a seven year old phone is actually still pretty decent for the most part. Now, with that being said, if a phone manufacturer literally went ahead and repl you know, made a phone like this in this day and age and said, okay, this is our budget phone. Like go ahead and use it. Even if it was a $50 phone, I would literally vomit. I would literally say this is a horrible performing phone. It's so slow. It's so inconsistent and I would not have a good experience with it. But because this is an older phone, I do have to give it a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. And that's kind of what I'm doing. It's not a horrible performing phone for a 2013 phone, but it just wouldn't be my first device I would go ahead and pick up right now. So that really pretty much covers it up. That's how I would sum it up. <laughs> if you guys have any other questions or anything, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button. That would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count. So it means so much if you guys could hit that. Also check out the other links down in the description as well. My Twitter, my Instagram, my other channels. More importantly, everything else. I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.